Hi, my name is Beth Massey, and today I'm going to show you how to set up application security to control user access to parts of a Visual Studio LightSwitch application. LightSwitch is a new development tool for building business applications for the desktop and the cloud. LightSwitch makes it easy to create data-centric, rich Internet Silverlight applications. This lesson picks up where we left off in the last video. We have a simple order management system with products, customers, their orders, and details. We can search and edit customers and products as well as enter orders for them in a couple different ways. Let's run the application real quick to show you where we are. Okay, notice I have a couple screens that I can access. One is open by default here, it's a search screen. It allows me to search for customers. When I click on a customer, the details screen opens. The other screen here on the menu um, allows me to add a new, create a new customer, as well as to um, browse the sort and sort the, uh, the products in the system. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to implement some security permissions in the application that will check, to check if a logged in user can see the, this product edit screen, as well as whether the user can add, edit, delete, or just view the customers. So let's see how we can do that. So the first thing we need to do is define a set of permissions and how we want the application to authenticate users. The way we do that is we open up the project properties and we go to the access control tab. There are two steps to, to, to security in an application. The first is authentication, meaning the application has verified that you are who you say you are. And the second is authorization, meaning now that I know who you are, here's what you can do in the system. We can choose between two types of authentication. We can choose to implement either Windows authentication or Forms authentication. Windows authentication is recommended if all your users are on a Windows domain or workgroup and you want to trust whoever logged into their computer is the same user that is using the application, meaning you don't have to provide an additional login form. This is handy because you never have to store or manage passwords outside of Windows itself, which makes it very secure. The second option is forms authentication. This means that a username and password is prompted for when the application opens and these values are checked against the database. So I'll show you both, but first let's choose Windows authentication. In addition to what you can select here, you can also select whether or not you want to allow only the users specified in the user screen of your application have access to your app, or whether or not any, any authenticated user on the Windows domain has access to the app. This basically means that you don't have to store all of those domain users in the database for the application. Okay, so I'm going to actually be a little more strict and only allow users that I specify. Okay, the other thing we're going to need to do is define permissions. Okay, so we can define our own permissions and check them in code for anything really. But typically you define permissions on entities and on screens and on queries. There are a set of security methods for entities, screens that allow you to define whether a screen can open and on the entity whether it can be viewed, edited, deleted, or added across any screen in the system. So let's define one screen permission for our product catalog and then four entity level permissions on a customer to control the actions you can do on that entity no matter what the screen. So here's where we define the authorization rules or the permissions. Um, notice you get one built-in permission that controls whether or not you can see uh, the security administration screen. And I'll show those to you in a little bit. So first, let's go ahead and define our permissions. I'm going to set up a can access product screen. And <clears throat> this is the display on the, uh, the security administration screen to make it nice display for the user. So can access products. So this name is used in our code and this name is used um, to display to the user on the admin screen. Okay, and let's just put a nice description. Okay, and let me make this a little bit bigger here. There we go. Okay, and then we'll do can add customer. OK, 
Okay, and can delete customer. Can edit customer. Oop. And can view customer. Notice here that there is a checkbox right here in this column. <clears throat> and this is available here that allows you to basically check off which permission should be on while debugging. So this makes it easy to test combinations of permissions which, without having to log into the application. So even if forms authentication is selected in debug mode, you won't see a login form. So for starters, I'm just going to turn on the, the can view customer to show you how uh, most of the application will be locked down. So now we just need to go ahead and write code that checks these permissions. So we need to implement them. So first what we'll do is um, check the products edit screen. Okay, so we'll go ahead and add some permission checking for the product screen. So I've got the uh, I've got two of them. I think it was the sorted products grid that we had on the in menu bar. And what I'm going to do here is you typically access the access control methods through the write code button and you'll see this access control method editable sorted grid sorted products grid can run so click on that and this is where we return result and the result is basically just going to be a permission check on the current user okay so the way we do that is just say result is equal to and the way you get at this is you say me dot user dot has permission okay and the permission is is in this little I enumerable, oops, excuse me, permissions, you'll see that these are the permissions that we just added into that grid. Okay, so can access product screen. Okay, so that will return true if we have access to the product screen, false if we don't. All right, so now we need to do the same thing for our customer entity. All right, so that was a screen level permission, and now we're going to do entity level permissions. Okay, so let's just save that. And the way we do the uh, entity level permissions is we go up into the entity to the application data, double click on the entity to open the entity designer, and in the same manner, write code, and now you can see these access control methods, and we can, we can um, add permission checks in for all of these um, methods. So I'm going to do for can delete, and then we're also going to want can insert, can update, can view, okay, insert, update, and actually it's called read, okay. So now we just need to write the permissions. So result equals me dot. Now we got to get up to the application because we're in actually the middle tier. There's the application data service here at class. So now we just go up to application and then there's the user has permission, permissions, and then now the delete, can delete customer. Okay, so we're just going to basically copy that over here. Oops. Hold on, there we go, okay, um, can insert, which would be our um, add, right, then we've got update, uh, that's the can edit, and then the read is our view. Okay, so the other thing, the last thing we're going to do is we want to actually check the uh, the can view customer, okay, also on the uh, search screen as well. So it shouldn't bring up the search screen if you can't view the customers in the first place. So um, that's another screen level permission. So we've got our search customers over here. Double click on that, go to write code, and search customers can run. Okay, so we don't need the application level here. We just have me user and now um, can can view. All right. Cool. All right. So let's go ahead and hit F5 and see what our application looks like now. Remember that we only have access um, to view the customers right now.
Okay, so first notice that I don't have access to the uh, product grid anymore, okay? But we can search for a customer um, or see a customer because we have view rights. But notice when I go into the customer, you'll notice that all of the fields are actually disabled, okay? I can't actually edit them. So I'm just get basically being able to look at the customers. So that's cool. So um, notice, though, however, that I've got over here the create new customer, right? this screen and also I have an, uh, a screen that I've also added I've added allow um, ads here and this screen before in a previous video we wrote this screen and I hooked this up this is a custom button we wrote okay so we actually forgot to uh, secure those parts of our screens however let's see what happens so let's add a new you know try and add a new customer I don't actually have rights to insert customer okay so let's see what happens when I try Notice here that the middle tier is actually preventing us from en inserting those entities because we actually added the um, these permission control, the access control methods. We're checking for those permissions on the entity itself. Okay, so when you add permissions to the entities, you're always going to be safe. Okay, what, regardless of whether you forget to secure a piece of UI or not, your middle tier is going to make sure that your data is always secure. All right, so that's pretty cool. Okay, so let's go back and fix, uh, create new customer, add some security around that, as well as um, this button right here. Okay, so let's go do that. Okay, so the first thing right here, we got this create new customer screen. What we should really do is make sure that we can't run it if we don't have permission to, because that will just frustrate our users. So result is equal to me dot user dot has permission and permissions dot um, can view or sorry can add customer okay and the other way now we, the other thing we're going to need to do is we need to go on our search screen and this custom button that we added um, earlier so in right here what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to edit the can execute code okay can execute we didn't have anything in here so that means it's always going to be enabled so what we really want to do is we want to also basically say can the application user has permission to to add okay and now the button will be disabled if we don't so let's go ahead and run it one more time just to make sure that stuff works So as you can see, you can add permission checks anywhere you want in the application, but typically you're going to add them around your entities, your screen, screens, and even your queries. Okay, so notice the screen isn't even displayed anymore, the add new customer, and there we go, I've got the button disabled. All right, cool. So now that we have our permissions and security code set up, let's uh, publish this application so we can see how to set up the permissions and roles for our users. Okay, so for this example, I'm just going to publish this as a simple two-tier application. Okay, I'm going to show how to do three-tier and publishing to Azure in follow-up videos, but um, we're just going to uh, specify that uh, in the properties window here that we want a uh, two-tier application. So we go to properties, application type, Okay, and this is where we can control whether or not we want to uh, publish a desktop application or a web application. So I'll get to web applications and future videos. Let's just select a desktop. Um, and then I'm going to just run the application service on the end user's machine. This means it's a two-tier application, all right? We'll get to uh, hosting the application in IIS as well as Azure and future videos. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and publish this. This, this type of application is just going to be a desktop application and it's going to connect directly to the database. But um, I, want to, I want to demonstrate how the authentication works. And right now we have the authentication set up as Windows authentication. So first we're going to say, okay, we want to verify, yes, we want to publish this as a desktop application. And I'm going to run it locally, okay? So that means that all of the components, the light switch components are going to be on the one machine, on this client machine. Okay, so how do I want to publish um, publish the application. Where do I want to put the setup exe basically? By default, it's just going to put it underneath the project that we're building in this publish folder. That's fine. Um, if you were actually really publishing this uh, application on your network, you probably want to put this on a UNC share. The other thing is we can publish directly to the database now or we can create a script. I'm just going to publish to the database directly. 
Okay, so here's where um, we specify the connection strings. We need an administrator connection string in order to create the database. Okay, so I haven't done that yet, so we need to create the database. Um, this is in the deployment database. And then we're going to um, specify the user's connection. In this case, they're both exactly the same because we're using integrated security here. Okay, all right, so um, let's next. Oh, and if you don't have a database login, you're going to use, maybe you use a um, username and password in your connection string, you can go ahead and create it here. Okay, I'm just going to use Windows Authentication to publish the database. All right, so now here's where we get, here's where it gets fun. This is where we're going to need to specify the administrator account. So when we deploy the application for the first time, the only thing that's going to be inside that database are the user permissions. Okay, we're not going to have any roles or actual users set up. It's just going to be those per, those permissions that we defined in the application. All right, so let's get the username here. Um, I can't, you know, user, administrator username cannot be blank. Um, I'm just going to make sure that I am the administrator. Okay, so that's going to, that is my Windows login account, and that's going to be my administrator. Okay, so now we're just going to get to the prerequisites. I don't need anything additional to install on the user's machine to get my application to run, so I'm just going to click Next. Okay, and we could specify a certificate, and this would mean that you won't see uh, you know, a warning message when you install the uh, application, that it will be trusted application. But I'm just going to skip that for now. We'll get to that in a future video as well. All right, so let's just go and uh, look at the summary. That looks good, and go ahead and publish the app. Okay, this is going to take a couple minutes. Um, there it says the build is started. Um, if we view, we view the uh, output window next time, I'll, I'll open the output window next time we do it. And there's the publishing happening. Okay, so our publish succeeded. So now we can go ahead and uh, take a look at the uh, publish folder that we got here, and we'll see that there's a setup exe. So I'm just going to go ahead and double click on the setup exe. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and install it. Okay, so now we've got the app open. And you'll notice all I have access to is the administration screens, okay? Because I am basically only an administrator that has access into the administration screen. All right, so let's start setting up some roles of our application. So here's what the role screen looks like. Now what I want to do is I want to define three roles for this application. Um, we already have one by default that was already set up for you as the administrator and you can't change that one. That was in that grid when we were setting up the permissions. Okay, so but we can now create uh, additional roles. So let's go ahead and uh, create a new role and we're going to call this product, uh, sorry, product planner. Okay. And then we're going to have another one called an order entry operator. And then one more order entry manager. Okay, so some of the permissions, the product planner permissions, what they're going to get access to is they can access the product catalog. Okay, and the order entry operator all they're going to get access to do is to uh, view the customers, okay? Because we didn't actually secure anything related to orders, so anybody in the system can manage orders, but we're going to basically allow only view rights to the customer on the order entry operator. But we'll allow the order entry manager to go ahead and be able to add, delete, edit, and view customers, okay? Cool, so let's save that. So now we've got the roles set up and the permissions for each role. And so now what we need to do is need to go to the users screen and add users, okay? You'll notice that I'm in the system here and we're doing Windows authentication and I, I am basically telling the application that I am only an administrator. Now I want to add additional roles. So I'm gonna add myself as a, an order entry operator and let's do this. Let's add myself as an order entry manager as well. So now what does this mean? 
Because the order entry operator does not have rights to do anything but view the customer, but the order entry manager has all rights to do things to customers, I'm going to be able to do anything to customers. So the permissions add up, okay? So I hope that should make sense. All right, so let's hit save. Okay, and now I'm going to log out, and then I'm going to just start the app again. Now I've got it installed. It actually shows up in my start menu. Okay, so now I've got access to these tasks, create new customer and search customers, but I don't have access to the product planning. Okay, so now I can go in and I can add customers. Okay, so let's see how um, the forms authentication works. Okay, so let's go ahead and shut this down. Okay, just real quick, I'm going to um, open up the output window real quick. Okay, cause, so we can see the published progress next time. So let's go ahead and go to access control here, and now I'm going to change this to forms authentication. Okay, so now we're just going to go ahead back here, and we're going to go to publish. You can also publish the application by right-clicking on the application and going to publish. Okay, so now we've got basically this configuration, right? So we basically have uh, the desktop app. The We're going to run it locally again. Okay, we're going to publish directly to the database again. We've, my connection strings have not changed. Um, and no, the application administrator has already been created. Okay, so that's, that's basically what's happened. But what I want to do is now specify the full name, username, and password. Okay, that was the application administrator had been created based on Windows authentication. Now I want to change it to um, forms authentication. So I'm going to need not my Windows credentials, but I'm going to add in a new uh, new username and password that's going to be stored in the database. Uh, let's just do this. Um, Beth Massey, uh, and I'll just, any password will do. Okay, what is it? What is its problem? Oh, it doesn't mean that. Okay, I got to enter a strong password. Okay, cool. All right, there we go. All right, so next. Okay, and the same thing. We're not going to need to change any of those configuration settings. All right, so let's go ahead and publish. This time we've got the output window open. We can see what's happening. Okay, so our publish succeeded. Cool. All right, so let's go back over to our publish directory. There we go. Now we just need to rerun setup. And this time we'll just update the application. And now this time you can see that we got a username and password prompt. Okay, so that's how the difference between Windows authentication and Forms authentication. And then we basically have access to just the administration roles and users. And then we would set up the permissions for the rest of the users in our system by adding username and passwords. If we go to the user screen this time, you'll actually see the password um, and confirm password fields. Okay, so that's how you set up access control and security in a light switch application. Thanks for watching.